What's up guys? My name is Adam LZ and today I'm going to be reviewing the brand new Profile Z Coaster. So most of you guys know that I'm a pretty big Profile fan and I swear by their cassette hubs and my front hub that's Profile and I've ridden them forever. So as soon as the Z Coaster came out, literally comments and comments and comments asking me if I was gonna try it. Since it's a new hub and it's pretty expensive, not a lot of people have it. So I thought it'd be a good idea if I tried one out, ride it around for about a month, and then give you guys a good breakdown about the hub. My particular Z coaster is polished, nine tooth driver, left hand drive because I grind on the right side and I don't like grinding on my sprocket, and with a solid axle. I've had issues in the past riding a hollow axle and I just really want something beefy so I'm not scared every time I drop my peg down on the ledge for it to break. The cool thing about profile stuff is you can pretty much custom build your hub on their website when you're ordering it. You could have titanium, you could have chromoly, you could have hollow, you could have female, you could have different sizes. So you really have a lot of options with the hub and you can kind of build it to how you want it. First impressions of the hub. So before you think of a negative Nancy about the hub, I just want you to know that my first impressions are normally pretty negative about things because I'm always like very weary of new stuff because it's like why hasn't it existed in the past? Right out of the box, it looks good. I mean, it's big like a free coaster. It's got a massive bearing and it feels really smooth. Like this is just in my hand. I haven't even put it on my bike yet. I go and put it on my bike and I start fooling around with it. Now, before I got the hub, I was under the impression that it was basically like a free coaster and a cassette. I was wrong. Basically, the best way to describe this is just a really, really, really cool free coaster with a few benefits of the cassette. So I put it on my bike and I expected myself to be able to ride it like a cassette, you know, do backwards manuals and other things with like backwards pedal pressure, you know, like do fakies and actually fakie like do 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 do. But that wasn't really the case. Basically, it's like a cassette when you're pedaling, so you can like ch 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 and it has engagement. But when you're rolling backwards, if you go a little bit faster, then the hub will create itself going backwards. This is if you're in cassette mode. Mind you, this is very confusing. I'm gonna try to explain this throughout the video. But naturally when you fake it, you go a little bit faster than the hub would itself. So what that actually does is that engages it into free coaster mode. So you can't actually ride it like a cassette doing backwards manuals and stuff unless if you like go the exact same pace as the hub, which is very, very difficult. So I was a little bit bummed about that because I, that was like my selling point for the hub was like, okay, cool, I'll be able to do like my backwards manuals and pedal around and do all my dumb like cheater stuff and have the benefit of a free coaster. So I was a little bit bummed. On the other hand, if I was just looking at this comparing it to a free coaster, it is literally the most dialed free coaster I had ever ridden. Everything feels smooth. If you guys have ridden free coasters, they always feel like crap. The bearings just feel like they're unsealed and they just never feel smooth. You don't get like a good click of engagement because the clutch and it's just, it just feels sloppy to me. Where this hub felt dialed, like it feels like a profile hub. If you guys have ridden them in the past, you know what I mean by that. So to explain how it works really quick, basically you pedal normally and it's just like a cassette. There's clicking noise, you have instant engagement, and the hub goes. It has a pretty decent sound too. Not as loud as my mini, but I wouldn't expect it to be. And then basically, if you wanna go into coaster mode, you give a quarter crank back and it engages the coaster. So I'm gonna to try to do this with my hand, but it's kind of weird. It's easier for me to show you with a bite clip, which I'll put in right after this. So we're in cassette mode. So we're in cassette mode and we wanna go into coaster. And basically you just bring in a quarter crank back and it starts coasting. What this basically means is you're riding and then Kind of like what you do before a trick anyway, you kind of go a quarter crank down and you bring it back to where your level feet position is. Okay guys, so right now we are in cassette mode when you're like this, so like you have the crank pressure. But what you do, when you want to enter the coaster mode, you go a quarter crank down, bring it back, and then you're coasting. It was really fun because I got to try this hub out at a ton of different parks on my trip up from Florida to Connecticut. And probably the first term that I would use to describe this hub, like my first impression, again, you gotta you got mind me, is confused. I would ride a bull and the hub just can't make up its mind and it would be like switching between free coaster and cassette mode. So it's like quiet and it's like rrr, rrr, rrr. And then people are looking at me like, what the heck is going on with this kid's bike? And I'm just like, my hub is confused. So basically what it was, when I'm riding the bull, my foot position was changing drastically as I was pumping and my feet were going up and down and it was actually engaging and disengaging the hub so it was it would like click and be in cassette mode so it'd be like and then go silent because it would go into free coaster mode. Part of this was just me not really being used to the hub and like figuring out where okay like I want to stop it here or I want to go to the quarter crank and engage full free coaster mode. Right out of the box the hub comes with a 60 degree slack ring which means you have 60 degrees of slack if you measure it with 25 9 gearing. I don't know if that was really enough for me because I had a really hard time I would do a trick and the hub would sometimes engage on me because naturally when you land like you're not gonna keep your feet perfectly flat. Sometimes my feet would like move a little bit especially if you're doing like a big drop and then the hub would engage on me and for those of you who have ridden a free coaster before when it engages and you're not expecting it 
that thing will just throw you right off the bike. So right away, I decided that I was gonna switch to one of Profile's different slack rings and move up to a 75, which is 15 degrees more of slack. If you're ordering your hub from Profile, you can get any type of slack ring you want, but switching it was actually surprisingly easy. Profile has a video on how to switch it. You need a special tool, so unless you wanna order that, you might be better off just getting it done when you buy the hub. But the internals on this hub are so simple compared to a normal free coaster that I was just like amazed because I am so bad at working on hubs and I was actually able to figure it out and not break anything. So I was really stoked about that. Profile has an instructional video. It's not really the best video and I kind of told them that, so maybe they'll make a better one. If not, I can make one describing how to work on the hub, but it's literally so simple that if you watch the video, you'll be able to figure out what to do. I just prefer videos where they like tell you every little single detail versus a video of just someone working on a hub from a distance and not really explaining anything, but that could just be my personal preference. As soon as I got the 75 degree slack ring in the hub, it felt so much better. I could go in like 180 whip up stuff or going really fast and have confidence that the hub wouldn't engage, which is like really important to me because anyone that does that trick knows that you land and your feet are probably on the cranks and if it engages, your foot just gets like sandwiched and just bent in every possible way between your crank and your frame and it's miserable. So being able to like rely on this hub now with the 75 degrees and like know that the free coaster is going to have that much play so I don't have to worry about it, so worth it. So I feel like I've talked about a lot of the negatives of the hub, but I didn't really talk about the biggest positive yet. The sound. Okay, who doesn't like a hub that makes a lot of noise because honestly it's pretty sick. I know some people don't like it, but I think it's awesome. Especially my videos don't have any music, so I hated free coasters because there's like no sound in my videos then and I'd much rather have like the It just like fills the gap. But the cool thing about this hub is the sound kind of lets you know whether the hub's engaged or not. So when you're in cassette mode, just pedaling on normally, you'll hear the clicking audibly like in your ear. So you know, okay, if I go and do a 180, I'm gonna get thrown off the bike. It's not in coaster mode. Where when you go down and then up, and you're in coaster mode, it's completely silent. So it's like a really good way to notify yourself what's going on. Also, I really like hearing it. It's made it very easy to ride park with a free coaster, because that was my biggest negative when I used to ride a free coaster, was I'd be in a bowl and I'd have no idea like where my hub is at. So I'd be like going really fast, but I'd be like coaster, and I'd freaking go pedal, and there would be so much slack and it would just be like and then I'd fall and then cry and then stop making videos for a week and then you guys would complain to me and I'd go hug Nicole and it'd all be better. Shout out to Peppers. Um, but hearing that clicking noise just really helps and that's definitely my favorite part about the hub. And no, I haven't tried degreasing it. I don't want to mess with this hub. Yes, you can degrease hubs to make it louder. I don't suggest that with any hub, especially this one, even though I made a video like four, five years ago on that exact couch telling you guys to degrease your hubs. Don't do it. Don't. Grounded. I forgot. There's also another really cool part about being able to hear the clicking and having that cassette-like engagement. Unlike a free coaster, it actually remains in a cassette even when you pedal backwards a little bit, as weird as that sounds. I want to say it was like 25 or 45 degrees. I think it's 45. So basically what it means is you can take your feet on the pedals. Again, I'll have a video of this I'm like playing over it right now. And you can go back and you can crank unlike you could with a free coaster because it still has the pause in this so you have that engagement. So you can kind of go back, crank, back, crank, back, crank, back, crank, as long as you don't go all the way to where the free coaster engages. Where with a free coaster hub, it kind of remembers where you started. So if you go back, it's not gonna start engaging until you go all the way back to that initial position. And that's like a really cool part about the hub that I feel like no one really addresses that well because it's a very confusing concept unless you ride the hub. So with the cassette mode, the cool thing is you can kind of just like bitch crank and you still do it. You can even use it for manual 180. You just gotta be careful because it'll still stay in the cassette mode. Oh my gosh! Damn kids, move out the way. God, learn how to drive a bike. Side note, if you ever meet me at a skate park, ask me to ride my bike because I'd be more than happy to let you ride it. Everyone likes kind of like figuring out the hub and playing around with it. So that's another thing that was really cool about having it on the trip. But yeah, if you learn the hub and you can kind of remember to like stop pedaling right when your feet are level, it's like a cassette in that you can even use pedal pressure for like manual 180s, which is really, really convenient, especially when you need as much of a bitch crank as I do, because I'm really terrible at like free coaster ones. So being able to do that, especially for like 360s out of manuals and getting that pedal pressure, if you can time it right and you can hold it and not adjust your feet, it's really helpful. There's certain tricks that I do too, like let's say feeble hard 360s, where I'll consciously try to leave it in cassette mode. So when I land, because I land going kind of slow, I can just kind of like give a little crank and maintain my speed versus if I was in coaster mode, I would land and then it would be like, catch. 
that's pretty cool about it. Going on to more specs about the hub, it weighs about 20.6 ounces, which is definitely on the lighter side for a free coaster. Most of them are around like 20.6 to like 27 on average. So I mean, we're talking seven ounces, that's like about a half a pound, so it's not that big of a difference. Mind you, Profile's cassette hub is about 14 ounces, so it is about half a pound heavier than a cassette, but it's a half a pound lighter than most other free coasters. So it's it really is the middle ground between a free coaster and a cassette. There's also articles online about how you can actually turn this hub into a profile elite hub if you wanted to, so like a full cassette. So I guess if you get it and then you decide that you don't want the free coaster anymore, you can turn it into a cassette. I don't know why you do that. You'd probably be better off just selling it and buying a cassette. I don't know, but that's pretty cool. So why would a hub that's this magical and mysterious with this many benefits be ridden by so few people? The price. These hubs, if you want to get one, it's going to cost you about $358. That's literally almost the price of a frame. Most other coasters cost somewhere around the $160, $170 range. So that's a pretty big difference. That's almost double the price. But if you guys have ever ridden anything profile before, you know that their hubs normally last twice as long as everything else out on the market. So if you look at it in that perspective, it's worth it. Free coasters can be really frustrating. If you ask four of your friends that have free coasters who's had issues with it, I guarantee you at least two of them have had to have them rebuilt already and have nothing but headaches about them. This hub is literally so simple and it just feels so dialed that honestly, I think it's worth it. I've been very happy thus far considering I only have been riding it a month, but I'm more than happy to make an update if this hub like breaks on me and like really aggravates me. Judging by the quality and everything of the build, I don't think it's going to. Also, big shout out to Profile for still making everything in USA. It's stupid expensive to do that, so that definitely contributes to the price, uh, to the price tag. Sometimes I can't speak. I'm sorry. Just to sum it up, it is not a cassette hub. Don't get this hub intending to be able to like do backwards manuals with like pedal pressure, but do know that you'll have some of the benefits of a cassette with a super, super, super dialed free coaster that's also very light and easy to work on. If you guys follow me, you probably know that I switched back to a cassette after I started on a free coaster pretty quickly, where this hub, I really don't wanna switch back to a cassette because I really feel like it's the best of both worlds. So for me, this hub's actually kept me on a free coaster and I think it's gonna help my riding a lot because I can start to do a lot of different tricks that I haven't been able to do before. And honestly, another thing that's pretty cool about this hub, none of your friends have them. So if you have them, everyone's gonna wanna ride your bike. It's like when Lamborghini comes out with a new car and you're like the first one to have it, everyone wants to sit in it. Although I feel like if you have a Lamborghini, regardless of what model it is, people wanna sit in it. So that's probably a bad example. But it's a cool hub. The guys' profile are really nice. I definitely support what they do 100%. And that's one of the reasons why they're like pretty much the only hubs I ever ride on my bike. I hope this video answered a lot of you guys' questions about the hub. If you do have any more, just write a comment in the description. However, make sure that someone hasn't already asked it already because I'm gonna go through and I'm gonna try to answer every single question that I possibly can. So not having to answer repetitive questions would make my life way easier. In case you're wondering, this is laced to a Sunrim Big Baller. I've never ridden this rim before, but it seems to be pretty strong so far. Also, a quick side note, today I just released a bunch of new products, including these shirts and these hats, which I'm actually really stoked about. I got like black suede on the brim and it looks so cool. Shout out to Blue Splatter. I bleed blue, I don't bleed red anymore. Red Blood Splatter's dead. Thanks guys for watching. Um, I really appreciate every one of you guys that subscribed to this channel. I've said it before, but 200,000 people is insane. I, I honestly don't even know if there's 200,000 people that out there that ride BMX, so that that's crazy. I went to New York City the other day, I met a bunch of you guys, I'm gonna be going to the UK this summer, uh, I'm gonna try to go to Canada, I'm trying to go all over and like meet people and have a good time and film videos, so hopefully I'll bump into one of you guys sometime soon and you can try out my hub. Thanks guys for watching and don't forget to hit the like button and share this around with a friend who might be interested in the profile hub! Bye! Today we're gonna be talking about the difference between cassettes and free coasters. I'm gonna tell you the best things about riding a free coaster and the worst things about riding a free coaster. What? You think every black dude can freestyle? No, but everyone in our videos can freestyle.